Okay, today's assignment is black and white images. So I'm going to try to go through it quick. So I'm talking a little bit faster because I only have 15 minutes. Try not to take too much of your time. Basically, the, the gist of this lesson is to teach you the difference between analog and what a digi digital image or a digital sound is. Analog is something like if it's a sound, analog is a sound that sounds smooth like when we're talking, like, I, like I'm talking right now. It doesn't sound like a robot, like you may have heard Siri say things that kind of sound robotic. Um, analog would be uh, where it sounds a lot smooth, a lot more smooth, the, the words transition better. Same thing with an image, and we're going to talk about that today. Um, our binary kind of translates over to how to create images or how images are created through binary code. Um, so a digital image will look really pixelated because... Um, it won't have as many pixels, and so you guys can see the see the pixels and see it won't be very good quality. Where a really high quality picture will have millions of pixels, and you won't be able to see any of them, and everything will look smooth, has curvature, has detail. So that's kind of basically the gist of today's assignment. You'll find it, uh, black and white images, on the Google Classroom. I'm going to click on it here, and once you click on it, you guys have gotten used to uh, going file, Make a copy, and that's what I'm going to do right now. Make sure you've saved it wherever you want it, so make sure you save it in your computer science folder somewhere. Okay, I'm not going to do that here. I've already got this one that I've shared with you open. Um, also, you need to open up another tab that says code.org. When I go to code.org, I'm automatically signed in. Make sure you're signed in. Go down to your class, whatever class it may be, and click on the Unit 1 Digital Information stuff. And you're going to scroll down to lesson seven and click on number three, the pixelation widget. Okay. You guys go there and wait. I'm going to show you. Uh, actually, first, before you begin, I want you to pause this video and I want you to watch this video real fast. She basically talks a little bit about how to use the pixelation widget. So go ahead and pause this video now and. When you unpause it, we'll start uh, on how to how to use it. Okay, if you've done that now, you guys are right here. You're going to read this task. It says start by trying to cre recreate a three by five letter A depicted at the right. So we're basically making this pixelation using ones and zeros, and I'll show you how. In the video, she said that you had to basically code it the zeros and ones for the width and height, but that was an older model of this uh, pixelator. So all you have to do now is just use this up and down or you can actually type it in or use the slider. So I think she wanted three by five for our A. And the way it works is this. If I have a zero, it turns it to black. And if I have a one, it turns it to white. And you'll notice that the numbers go in order from left to right, high to low. So if I kept typing, all these would be just like that. Okay, pretty sweet. Uh, but also, she talked about line breaks in the video. You want to, if I wanted to get this one right here to turn, I also got to turn it uh, white, I hit a one. If I want to turn the next one black, I hit a zero. And then she talked about line breaks. So right here, in order to stay, um, in order to stay uh, organized, I'd want to put hit enter and do a line break so I can know where my code is. Um, then she talked about raw, raw format, readable format. If you ever get to typing on the same line, it'll put it in readable format if you just hit that button. If you ever mess up, you can start over right here. After you finish, and I'll go ahead and do the A with you guys because it's pretty easy. Uh, you just got to get the, the hang of which one turns black and which one turns white. And remember, so ones turn white and zeros turn black. So we're making the A. I'm making my line break. I'm going to go uh, black with a zero white and black with the inner go black 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 go black go black white black and black white black again that should make my a after you get finished hit save image and then you'll go to finish continue to next stage okay and you'll read this part right here Basically, it's just asking you. It's saying they've already created the code over here. All they want you to do is look for one mess up. They added one extra number, one extra bit that actually made this uh, made everything kind of go out of whack. It kind of messed up this entire image. So after you read that, hit enter, and I've actually already created mine. I'll start it over so you guys can see. 
Um, but it looks like this when you start. You'll have to figure out which image or which number, which bit to take out. And you may have to try to do it. And then if you mess up, restart. Just hit the start over button just like I did. And it'll, it'll start over. But you want your image to basically look like the preview that showed before. So um, that one's not too hard. Once you get done, finish and go on the next stage. And we're going to create this duck. And when I when I gave you this duck or the swan, goose, whatever, uh, when I gave you this, I also put in a worksheet on your Google Classroom. This is how you're going to get points today. So open up this duck. And we're going to uh, create this image. And it says, and I'll show you specifically how to do that real fast. It says, Read each square of the image and fill in the responses of the worksheet. It says, enter the bits on code.org and use a timer. It doesn't matter about the timer. Each bit can only be either black or white. You'll have to decide for each square. So, it's best if you do this. If you, if you hit OK and you minimize your screen, so you can kind of split them. I've done this a little bit today. And if this one's maximized, you just minimize it. And if you've got it in one of these, you can just pull it, drag it out. Okay, that's how that works. But once you've got to minimize to where you can kind of see both of them, then I want you guys to, I want you guys to come over here and we're going to count. Let's start off by counting the width. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six wide. So we're going to make it six wide. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight high. So we're going to make it eight high. And then we're just going to go code it, just like you guys did the A. And um, we're just basically, it goes like this. And this is the way you do it. It's easy. Each code can either, either be only black or white. We can't, we can't split them. So this one, we start with this one. This one is mostly white. So we'll put a one. This one is mostly white. So we'll put a one. This one is mostly, I'm going to say black. So I'll put a zero. This one is mostly black. This one is mostly white. This one is mostly white. So now I want to hit enter to go to my next one. And you just keep doing the same thing for the duck right here. And basically, you, you virtual kids, you're gonna, you guys are going to learn this. But the point of this lesson is, remember, remember analog. So this is, looks more like a digital image when we get done. Okay, It won't look very good. Uh, it'll look really pixelated because, remember, we're only working with you know, a six by eight image here. Okay, that's not very many pixels. When you look at a regular picture that you guys may have, like on your refrigerator or something, those those have millions of pixels, and that's what helps it have good analog, the curvature, the detail. Um, so after you get finished with that, you're gonna go answer how many total bits were needed. Well, how many? What's six times eight? How long did it take it to build? So if it took you five, ten minutes, just put how long you roughly you think it took. How much does the digital image resemble this one, and why might that be the case? So how much do th does this one resemble the one you just created? And you basically need to talk about, and you guys will realize, the more the more bits or the more pixels you have, the, the higher quality and the more analog you will see. It's hard to make these little feet if you're only going to get to choose the pixel to be black or white. Okay, so basically you're going to talk about how my, pic, my pixel sample size is not large enough for, for the one I created to be very to be good analog. You're going to do the same thing for this one. You're going to have a little bit larger picture here with more bits, more pixels. Okay, and then you're going to answer the question about that. And the very last thing you're going to do is, don't worry about these two, but you're going to basically go select your favorite company logo and you're going to, so let's just say if I went and found, uh, you could find any logo you want, any logo that you wanted to create one for. So I'm just going to say Under Armour, Armour logo. You can create whatever you want. Be, be creative. But I'm going to click on Images. I'm going to click on this image. I'm going to right click it. I'm going to copy image. And I'm going to go back to my worksheet and I'm going to right click and then I'm going to paste. So I can have a picture of it there. And then on this bottom one that has the most pixels, don't worry about these two. That's too easy. Let's do, we're, we're going to create uh, my Under Armour logo or whatever logo you just created. So after you get done with that and you've answered these questions, then you guys are done with black and white images today. Just remember that analog is basically um, creating more pixels in a picture or uh, having sound that sounds really smooth.
and transitioning and not choppy. Okay, so you guys are kind of getting the feel for analog. You guys can look up the Webster's Dictionary definition of analog. It might not make as much sense, but uh, that's the gist of today. You guys can see how these binary, binary numbers have translated into what a picture looks like, and this is only black and white. Next week, we'll get into uh, colored pictures, and those colored pictures, you can probably guess that they require a lot more numbers to create a colored image. But we'll get into the RGB stuff next week. So you guys do this, submit it for your points. If you have any questions, shoot me an email. Thanks, guys.